everybody. Uh, my name is Fred, aka DJ Nexus 6 uh, from St. John in Brunswick, and today I'm going to show you how to self ground your Techniques SL 1200 turntable. And I'll also point out a few things uh, about the turntable and uh, give you a few uh, tips about maintenance and things like that. Um, so uh, we'll get started. Um, so, this is a Techniques SL 1200 turntable. This is the M3D model, um, now discontinued actually. But uh, in any case, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take it apart and I'll show you how to take it apart the correct way because there's different ways to do it. Um, the first thing that you want to do uh, with your turntable uh, is uh, release any uh, loose objects because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be flipping this over to work on the underside. We actually have to take it completely apart. Now this is the ground wire right here, okay? And what this does is it uh, basically uh, isolates any AC hum off the cartridge. And what they do with the turntable is there's several circuit boards underneath uh, the platter and also underneath the pitch fader and the tone arm. And they're all connected by a ground wire. And what we're going to do is we're going to ground the wire to the RCA cable so that when you go to plug this into your DJ mixer, you don't have to worry about plugging this into the DJ mixer because it'll be grounded to the shield of the RCA here because all mixers share the same ground. Um, well, not all mixers, but about 99% of them on the market, including the Pioneer uh, DJM series. So we're going to get started. Um, so yeah, the first thing that I want to do is uh, we're going to basically secure any loose objects including the platter. Now this is very important. This is probably one of the most important things about your turntable. Underneath this platter is a, uh, a magnet. Uh, the, uh, the platter on a 1200 series turntable is the motor. Um, it's, uh, a, a 1200, believe it or not, has almost no moving parts. There's no belt, there's no... Uh, there's, there's, uh, it, it, just, it just goes, and I'll explain that in a second. But what you want to do, this, uh, this spindle is actually uh, by itself, there's nothing that pulls on it except for the platter. So what, what you have here is, is a spindle which is in its own casing. Um, the, the way to remove this platter correctly is, is to pull up on it and when you do that you should, uh, well the correct way to do it is to tap on it with a screwdriver uh, because this will, this actually moves up and down. Oh actually that came off pretty easy but some of them, some of them actually because the platter isn't removed very often um, and because you're pushing down on it sometimes when you're when you're DJing, it can actually get not stuck, but it'll 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 get on there pretty good. And the correct way to do it is just to kind of lift up on it with your thumb like this, and then tap on this to release the platter, and then it just comes right off. Okay. So this is the motor on a Technics SL 1200. This is your magnet, and this is called the stator, which is basically the motor. It's got all your field coils on it. Uh, and it's a basic uh, DC motor, it's a 24 volt motor um, and uh, we're not actually going to remove this today um, but underneath here is your motor circuit board which has like your pitch uh, pitch calibration uh, circuitry and stuff like that on it um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to move this away so yeah this here is the motor, it's a magnet, it goes in here when you turn the turntable on electricity, voila, okay um, which is really neat. It's the only turntable uh, pretty much in the world that has this motor. Um, uh, they actually have a patent on this, uh, Technics does, which I believe uh, runs out very soon. So everybody and their dog will probably be copying it. So what we're going to do, move the platter over there. Also, the counterweight on your tone arm, I'd like to remove that too just because in case, in case it might fall off or you just want to remove any, anything that, that could possibly fall off the turntable. Okay, also this pitch fader knob here, we're going to take it off. Take note of this little uh, piece of felt, or in this case I believe it's foam. This keeps the dust out of the fader, so you want to make sure that you keep that. Uh, what I do is I get a cup or uh, some kind of a bin of some sort to put all your screws in, because we're actually going to be removing this bottom case, this rubber piece here. We're going to remove the entire thing so we can get out the underside of this uh, Toner. Now on older models of 1200s, uh, anything made before 1983 actually has a, a cover right underneath the toner arm so you don't have to remove this if you want to do this modification. But uh, this turntable I believe you have to take the whole thing off. 
or we're about to find out anyway. So now that I got all these parts removed so that nothing can, can fly off the turntable, what I'm going to do is I use a milk crate, or you can use the dust cover from your original turntable. So what, what I like to do is just flip it upside down like this and just take note of where the tone arm is. The tone arm is very delicate. Okay, so now I've got it in here. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these feet. Okay, so we've got all the feet off. This is good. Alright, so if you'll notice, there's a pattern on the bottom of the case that kind of looks like the platter. That's exactly where the platter is um, when it's attached. So you've got a bunch of screws right here. Now these ones have big washers on them because this rubber base at right here is actually attached to the, to the bottom of the cabinet. The cabinet's made out of aluminum. It's like an aircraft type aluminum. It's a solid piece that's been cast. And what the rubber does is um, it helps prevent vibrations from bass frequencies when you're playing on large sound systems. Technics developed this uh, sometime in the uh, late 70s. Um, basically, they had, they had what was called the SL1200 um, Mark I, which is a turntable that's almost the same size as this, but doesn't have a slide pitch fader. It actually has two rotary, uh, two rotary knobs to change the pitch. And then uh, Matsushita, which is the company that builds the 1200, decided that they would try and attack the disco market by making a turntable more ergonomic for DJs. So they come up with this rubber base, which basically um, is attached to this. Now underneath here is actually a piece of carbon. I think it's carbon fiber. I've never actually researched it myself, but what it does is it also basically invades all the void space under here, so there's absolutely no void space underneath this turntable. It's a completely solid mass, which is why it is so good at resisting uh, feedback uh, in most cases. Okay, so these screws actually screw directly to the cabinet, as well do these four outer screws, which are much longer. Now these little skinny screws here actually attach into the piece of carbon, or uh, I call it carbon, it could be anything, it's, it's, it could be plastic. The point is, is that they screw into it, and um, so it's actually attached two ways. So what I do usually is I get these longer screws out first. So what I'm going to do first, because I like to go fast, I'm going to loosen every screw on here before I take the drill to it, because especially these ones here, if they're torqued in really good and you attack it very fast, you could actually break the screw out and then you're not going to get the screw out at all. Okay, you heard that little snap in there? Yeah, yeah that's why That's why you got to go at it with this before you start with the drill. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove every screw from the bottom base now and then we'll remove the base. Which, uh, what type of screw is this? Uh, Phillips? They're all Phillips head screws, that's correct. Um, every screw on a 1200 is a Phillips head screw. Um, these are uh, a standard size of Phillips head. They're not smaller or bigger, they're just the, the standard size. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I think that's a number two Phillips. Yep. I'm not sure. Um, so what I've done, now I have a drill. Don't, don't, do, don't do this with a normal drill. Um, mine has a, a variable speed on it. I like to control how much uh, torque I have. And I'm not going to use a whole lot of torque at all. I just want these to come out really fast. Because if you're going to sit here all day and, and turn, your wrist might get sore. At least mine do. So I'm going to remove all these screws. Okay, so I've got all the screws removed from this section here. So you just want to make sure that you've got them all. And you can actually see here where the aluminum is underneath the, uh, the rubber. Okay. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the screws uh, that connect to the, uh, the plastic underside or the... I forget, I forget what they call it. Technics has a name for it, but I, I can't remember it right now. I'll just call it the, the, the under, uh, underbelly, I guess. And you have to be careful when you're putting these screws back in because you don't want to torque them too hard because it, I, it's it's not it's not metal. It's 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 like a well you'll see you'll see when you when I get in there. It might even be fiberglass. Point is if you torque it too much it will crack. Okay. And 
take note, I'm putting them in my little bin of parts here so we can remember. Um, and just, just so you know, the fat washers go under the platter, right here where the circle is. And these longer screws go on the sides. And these screws are pretty self-explanatory because they're about two and a half inches long. Now one of them is actually uh, right under the start-stop. Now it, that screw doesn't actually attach directly to the aluminum. It attaches to a plastic piece which is directly connected to the switch. So when you're putting this screw back in, don't torque it too much or you'll crack it. And I mean it won't damage the switch but it does damage the integrity of the entire turntable. So. You, know, you, you just want to make sure that you're not, and, and believe me, I've learned all of this through trial and error on my own turntables, so, um, you know, it, 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 take, it takes a lot of trial and error to learn how to do these things, but I took it upon myself a long time ago, probably about, I'd say, eight years ago, when I first started fiddling with these, and uh, I did a lot of research, and I've actually called Panasonic many times, uh, asking about different problems that I've had with turntables, and I've gotten some pretty good advice from them, so... Um, that's kind of how I learned most of this stuff. But believe me, when I open this up, you're going to see how easy it is to actually work on these yourself. Um, I don't know if anybody out there has ever uh, done any work on their own vehicle, but if you've ever seen the inside of a Ford F-150, you pop the hood and you can actually stand inside the hood. Well, there's so much room to work on the components of a 1200, it's almost like it's designed to be worked on um, you know, by the user. Um, and I mean, it, it is a fairly expensive unit. I mean, most of these retail for about $800 a piece. And you might feel a little bit uh, weary about uh, pulling open your, uh, your $800 investment, but um, it could save you quite a bit of money because normally when you have this done professionally, you're looking to pay about $100 per turntable to do what I'm, I'm doing right about now. Um, just just in, in, in labor costs. Um, people that work on electronic equipment charge a lot of money. Okay, so we're going to remove more screws. Okay. So, let's see if I can get these out. There we go, there's one. Now, on older models of 1200s, this one's obviously been, been upgraded, but the screw that normally uh, comes out of here is longer for some reason on the MK2 model. So take note of that. If you notice a screw that is shaped differently than another one, take note of its orientation. Even take a black permanent marker or something or a little bit of liquid paper and just mark where it goes. Um, you know, it can't hurt to know where things go. On this particular turntable, they all seem to, uh, to be the same. This one's being a little stubborn. you get everybody out of the pool there we go okay so now I've got all the screws removed make sure your cords are free because they have to go through these holes in order to get uh, removed and when you do this loosen it up all on the sides kind of go around the turntable and make sure it's all gonna come apart if you notice one area that's stuck more than the other just be careful especially um, right here where the pitch fader is, the circuit board is very close to the edge here. So when you remove it, I try and remove it this way a little bit, just so I don't interfere with that. And this is usually quite tight around here, so you kind of have to pry it up a bit. Okay, it's starting to come up now. Okay, this one came off really well. So I'm going to pull the cords through, just like this. Another little uh, anecdote. This is about, I'd say, more than a third of the weight of your turntable is this rubber. It's over a quarter inch thick in places, and it's, uh, it's fairly heavy and contributes to quite a bit of the weight. So we're going to put it out of the way for now. Okay, so now what we have, again, this is the piece of uh, fiberglass or carbon. It's directly attached by quite a few screws to this cabinet. This is aluminum. This doesn't weigh anything. This is a very lightweight piece of aluminum. This is about the other two-thirds of the weight is this. Um, 
It's a very, very heavy material. Um, and you'll notice that it's been shaped by hand. Someone at the factory had to do this in order to get it uh, to fit in here. Um, at least it looks like it's been done by hand. I don't know, maybe they have a jig for it. Um, okay, so this here is your pitch fader circuit board. This is where the slider to change the speed of your turntable is located. Um, and I see they have a, a, a switch in here. Now what this switch does is it locks your turntable at exactly 33 and a third uh, speed for a perfect uh, pitch if you want to just listen to your records uh, and you don't want uh, the speed to be changed. But on this turntable, what they did was instead of having a center uh, detent in the middle where uh, normally a, a light would go on, which would indicate that you've got perfect pitch, um, they've removed that because what DJs found was when they were mixing, there's a little spot in between the pitch fader that's probably about in equal to about three quarters of a percent um, of, of tempo that you don't have access to because you have that bypass circuit in there. So what Techniques did is they listened to the demands of the DJs and said, okay, well, what we're going to do, we're going to put a switch in there, and when you throw the switch, you got perfect pitch. When the, when the switch is off, you don't have that detent in the middle, and you have access to that little area of pitch. So when you're beat mixing, you don't have to worry about fighting, you know, slowing one record down to speed another one up if you're, you know, if you're really close in your mixing. So that's why they did that. Um, you basically don't have that little tiny blacked out area in pitch. It is exactly it. That's exact. And there's actually a little ball in there on the MK2, which you can remove if you're if you're handy enough. Right over here is the uh, the switches for your 3345 to turn the turntable on and off. Um, so it basically has all of your your AC connections. The circuit board that we're after is actually under here. We have to do a little bit more disassembly in order to get it off um, because we want to be able to remove this cover, remove this little anchor which holds your wire and I'll explain something about this in a minute that's very important. Um, so we're going we're gonna to continue on here. So we're going to remove this bottom cover to your tone arm which is where the circuits are. Another thing you might want to know, this tone arm is not electrically connected to anything else on the turntable other than the ground wire. Um, there's no power running through it, there's nothing. If you turn your turntable off completely and unhook it from the wall, as long as you still have these leads hooked up to your mixer, you're still going to hear sound. Okay. Now these screws I'm removing by hand because you don't want to you don't want to mess around because they're fairly delicate. Okay, and they're, they're fairly small. So now I have this somewhat removed. We have to take these screws out as well. This is what holds the anchor down. Okay. And in this particular one came off quite easy. Sometimes they snap in and you actually have to kind of kind of torque it out with your fingers. Now, um, I'm going to have to get one of my jeweler screwdrivers, which I forgot. Because I'll show it. Actually, no, I think I can do that with my thumb. You're going to want to zoom in on this, because this is fairly important. Okay. So take note, these screws are a little bit longer than the ones that go in here. Okay. Now right here, there's two little clips that hold this wire together. Because what this does is it prevents this from moving. Because after this, there's nothing that anchors the lead wires directly to the circuit board. So if this was just dangling there, and I actually ran into this about probably three weeks ago, a guy sent me his 1200 because he had new cables installed, which were much bigger than this, didn't have this anchor on, and then when he went to move the turntable, pulled on the wires, and all of the wires ripped out of the circuit board, and I had to hot wire the entire circuit board myself. Very time consuming and very expensive for him. Okay, so what we're doing, there's two little kind of clips, which clip right into there. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway. If you're doing this yourself, you're going to see it. And it's, it's fairly straightforward. Basically, this clips into here, and then when you screw it down, it anchors this wire so that it can't move and rip out your wires or your circuit board. So we're going to put that in our little bin of goodies. Now what we're going to do, now that I have all the screws removed and I have the wire anchor removed, we're going to remove this bottom plate. Okay. 
Now, this plate is rotatable. Um, these holes uh, will actually fit anywhere on here. There's two uh, raised kind of nubs on the underside of this. So say if you made some modification to it and you couldn't fit the anchor there, but you had to put some washers in or something, if you got a bigger cable, this is just if, you could rotate this so that it's better oriented, but we're actually going to put it back where it normally goes. So this, this goes horizontally with the back of the turntable, so that's all you really need to know. So we're going to slide this off the wires carefully. Um, I'll take the ground wire up first, and then what you do is you pull these out one at a time because they won't fit together, okay? Now, we're going to put this over here. Okay, now, this circuit board is very delicate. Uh, we're not actually going to remove it today because we don't need to. What we're going to do from here is fairly simple. Um, what I do need to do right away is heat my soldering iron up, which hopefully won't take too long. Now, you don't need any real special type of soldering iron. If you have uh, a really nice one, that's great, but this is my $9 pencil iron from Radio Shack, which I've been using for the last five years with no problems whatsoever. So I'm going to wait for that to heat up. Um, be careful not to put your soldering iron uh, near any flammable materials, because once it gets hot, it will catch stuff on fire. Uh, don't ask me how I learned that. Okay, so what we're going to do today is this wire is our ground wire for the turntable. It eliminates that nasty hum. Uh, we're not actually going to remove the wire. What we're going to do is we're going to snip it off a little bit and we're going to solder it to the shield of one of these cables. Okay, now how do you know what the shield is? Um, the shield is the outside wire which is connected to the outside of the RCA. Okay, this is a, uh, a male RCA uh, for obvious reasons and uh, this is the actual signal right here, left and right. The points. The points, that's correct. And then this is your shield. Now, it doesn't matter which shield you attach your ground wire to because the shield is common throughout the mixer. Um, once this is connected, this is connected to this, which is connected to every other metal contact point on the mixer, okay? A common mistake that people do make is they'll take this, they'll split it in half, add another wire to it and solder to both of these. If you do that, you are essentially rendering your turntable mono. So only attach it to one shield. So the inside wires are color coded, so they're red and white. So that's the inside contact. Um, so you don't want to solder it to that. What we're going to solder it to today is this one here. Now, this green wire here is actually the ground wire for the cartridge. So and I've learned this through talking to different people. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder to that one there. That way, if you have a cartridge that is self-grounded, when you attach it to this, you won't get a hum. Because some cartridges, like the Stanton 680, um, have a ground strap, and some people have removed it. So if you bought one used and they had that strap removed, and you went to go attach your cartridge, you'd still get a hum. So that's why that green wire is there, and that's what we're going to attach it to just for good measure. So while my soldering iron is heating up, of course I decided to rest my soldering iron on my pliers, which I need. Okay, perfect. I'm going to snip this wire. Now, snip enough that you can work with it. I'm actually going to snip probably too much off right now. Okay. Um, and keep your ground wire, because you never know when you might want to reattach it. If you so decide to resell your turntables and somebody wants one stock from the factory, you have the original cable. You can resolder it, and Bob's your uncle. So I'm just going to put that over here for now. Okay. Um, the tone arm has several moving parts inside. All, all these little plastic pieces will move when you're DJing. So this wire has to be pretty short. So you want to keep it about an inch in length so that when you solder it down, it's kind of flush with the circuit board. As you can see, these wires actually move, but they're very delicate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this oriented so that uh, I can solder it on there just like that, okay? So I'm going to snip it off probably about here, okay? You can discard this because you're probably never going to use it again. Okay. Alright. Can you do anything on this one for a few minutes? I'm going to take a couple of shots while this is happening. Okay. 
Alright, so, are you still rolling? Yep. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pinching the wire because I don't want to snip it right off. I just want to get it just so I have enough room to kind of nudge it with my fingernail. And if you don't have a fingernail, you can go to Radio Shack and spend $40 on a proper wire stripper, but I've never done such a thing. Alright. Come on, you. Off you get. Alright. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah, $2 exacto knife does the same thing, too. Yes, you are correct. Okay, so now I've got a little bit stripped off. Okay. Now you don't want to strip too much off because if, if the wire brushes against some other contact on the circuit board, you could essentially cancel out your sound. So you want it uh, fairly short. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the wire together a bit. Okay. So there's no loose ends that can fly out. Okay. Now what else I'm going to do, in case any little bits fell off the wire, I'm going to spray this out with a bit of uh, canned air. Also, it helps clean. I mean, you can do this all over your turntable if you want to, but I always do this before I solder simply because I don't want anything interfering with what I'm doing. Now, there is a fairly large uh, wire already connected here, so I actually might add a tad bit more, just a little bit. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do because this is how professionals do it, I'm actually going to tin this wire first. And tinning, all that means is that you're going to heat up this wire a bit, enough to get some solder on it, so that it'll melt inside the threads completely. So now I have some solder on the wire. Now I don't have to worry about holding on to this while I do that, because I don't have three hands. So what I'm going to talk to you about now is this circuit board and what we're going to do with it. It's a very delicate little circuit board. Uh, it's mounted on here with two little screws and we're not going to take it off because we don't need to. All we're doing is we're taking this wire, which is the uh, ground wire that was uh, going from the back of the turntable to your mixer. I've snipped it. Uh, I've tinned the end in preparation to solder it right here. And this is the uh, green uh, wire and uh, green is typically ground on most equipment. And the reason we solder to this green one is because not all cartridges are self-grounded um, so this eliminates the need for self-grounding cartridge so basically you can use any cartridge but if you soldered it to say this shield it may not work the same and you may still get your hum so on the safe side we solder to this because this is connected to this which uh, is the uh, the black wire comes from the tone arm attaches here and gets grounded to the rest of the turntable so none of the parts interfere with the ground. Now, you're going to notice on your circuit board, there's these little pathways here, and some people wonder what they do. And uh, basically, these are your signal paths um, for your circuit board. So you have your left shield here, which is this blue wire. You have your right and left signal wires, okay, which uh, terminate here and here. And then you have the green one, which is the shield on this one. So you have four little uh, circuit uh, traces. And so when they make the circuit board, they just trace out the circuit board and they use a, you know, a solution to eat away what they don't want uh, on the circuit board and you're left with these little pathways. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to solder it directly to this shield here. And when it's done, you will no longer need a ground cable for your turntable. Alright, so just one little thing to reiterate. Um, we do live in North America, so if you see these uh, markings, uh, L and R, R is uh, right and that's red, so you can always remember red is right. And in this green wire, uh, G usually stands for ground, so when you see G, green, ground. So that's all you really need to know. So what I'm going to do right now is I've already tinned my, uh, my lead here, my stripped wire, and I've already got my solder, uh, enough solder on the shield here, so what I should do is uh, put this on here. Don't push too hard either. Just enough to melt it and then hold it there for about probably seven or eight seconds. Let it go and you're done. And then after probably about 15-20 seconds, just give it a little tug, not too hard, just to make sure that it's on there good. You got no problems with the circuit board lifting from the solder, things like this. And we're good.
And so you've only got about an inch or so of wire in there. You don't want a lot of extra wire in the, in the space. I don't want any extra wire in here. There's too much in here to interfere. Uh, as you can see, the, 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 I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I'll point it out here. This wire here is the ground from the whole turntable, as I explained before. You can see the Technics was very careful to make sure that it was very flat because you've got all these moving parts in here and you cannot have any of these wires with the exception of the toner and wires moving because these are quite thick and if they interfere with the movement of the tone arm it'll interfere with your tracking and you could end up hearing the same loop over and over again for your entire DJ set and nobody likes that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it back together okay um, just before I do that I'm going to spray the turntable a bit get rid of any, anything that oh there's a little bit of a dust bunny Keep it clean. Okay. Now when you were talking about holding on to that ground wire in case somebody ever wants to use it, reattach it at some point, yep. is there a safe place we can stick that inside the turntable so that it's there so you don't have to keep it separately? There's not really any place in there that you want to tuck it probably, is there? Well, I, I wouldn't put anything inside your turntable that normally wasn't there unless it was something that you were modifying yourself. I mean, I've installed switches. I can do an M3D mod to an MK2 turntable where I actually put a switch there and wire it to the pitch board. Um, and the ground wire, you don't really need the same one anyway because you can just use No, one. you don't, but some people, I mean, they just like it because it has the lug on it and it came with a turntable. This is just... I've just learned this through trial and error myself. I mean, I've, I've sold turntables and they, and they wanted the ground wire back. I said, oh, well, I got the ground wire. There you go. I mean, you could, you could install a better ground wire. You could get yourself a nice shielded cable with a really nice big lug on it, you know, and whatnot. And, but, I mean, I, I just keep, I mean, I'm, I, I bet you I have about eight of these in my box. I've got all kinds of parts. Um, but I just keep it. I mean, you, you, you could essentially just tuck it right here, and then when you put the base back on, it would stay there, but then you end up with a weird lump on your turntable. And I don't think DJs like lumpy turntables, so we'll, um, we'll just leave it at that. I mean, you could use any wire, yeah. I mean, as long as, long as it's not like a... As long as, it, as long as it's a stranded cable, because this is something that has to bend quite a bit. Um, I'm going to thread this back through here, okay? Now, if you want to know the orientation of this, these bumps, this pattern, is uh, superimposed on the outside. So you want to make sure that it's it's on the outside. It will work the other way, but um, again, I, I just like to do it the way the factory did it. So if you'll notice, once I get these back on, there's two little nubs. You want to make sure that you're nice and snug on there, and that you're nice and flat and, and level. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little screws and put them back in, okay, one on each side. And when you're taking things out, it's easy to use the drill because you're not going to... That's it. Um, when I put it back together, I don't use the drill. Exactly. Um, just because it'll torque it. It might over torque it. You don't want to over torque these screws. Um, also, you want to make sure that your screws are going incorrectly. So I always back them off, like I put a little bit of pressure down on the screw and I back it off. And when you hear that click, you're, you're in the right orientation because if you put the screw in wrong, you can strip it, okay? And you don't want to do that. So just put enough pressure on there to get the screw in, torque it a little bit, but not, don't over torque it. I mean, you know, we're not, we're not trying to put a wheel on a car, we're, you know, putting back together a piece of sensitive electronic equipment. Okay, um, for the time being, I'm going to unplug my soldering iron. Safety first. Okay. Now we're going to work with this little bobbin here, this little uh, device. This is what holds our cable together. Okay. Now, some people, when they're trying to get in here, they'll break these tabs off thinking that they're really hard to get off. They're really not. Okay. So this, okay, goes like, like this. And then this goes like this. Okay, and now I've got the wire in. Okay, it's just that simple. Um, take your time when you're doing it because you don't want to do it wrong. This this is a really integral part of your turntable. Without this, you can't hear music. Okay, so treat your cables really nice. 
Um, the cables that come with your 1200 are fairly high quality. You can replace them if you want to. Um, I recommend if you do replace them, get a heavy shielded cable. Um, this is an actual shielded audio cable. It's not just your standard RCA cable. Some people reckon that these cables are the best cables to use with your 1200 and if you're going to replace them to get these. Buying these from the company is very expensive. Um, you can go to any car audio store, believe it or not, and get the cables that are designed for car audio installation because they're designed to suppress any and all outside interference. And I found they're really good to replace on these turntables and they're fairly inexpensive. Okay, so we're going to put these long screws back in. Again, don't over torque these um, because they're just going into a little plate of metal and if you overdo it, you'll strip it and then you're going to have to go buy bolts and that's a fairly complicated process. Okay, so now I've got these in here and we're nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to put the rubber bottom back on. Again, the big hole is where the transformer goes. That's, that's what's underneath here is the power transformer. This is where the spindle is. Okay, so what I'm going to do I'm going to feed these cables through. The round hole is where the RCA audio output cables go, and the oval hole is where the AC cord goes through. Okay, make sure you pull this all the way through because if your cable gets pinched under here, um, it could um, cause a short or whatnot. Okay, so make sure the cables are nice and free. Okay. Kind of feel around the turntable with your finger, make sure that the, the bottom cover is fit correctly. If you have to force it, it means you've got it on or wrong. It should just fit right over top because it came off your turntable. Okay. So the first screws that I'm going to put back on are actually the longer ones. Okay. Now when they design the turntable, they put the screws in such a way to help with the feedback problems. If you notice these long screws are directly underneath the feet, connected to the corners of the turntable. Okay. As well, these screws here are connected directly to that piece of carbon that you saw under there, okay, in very strategic places. I mean the platter is the most vibration prone piece of your turntable and there is actually a great big piece of rubber under your platter which I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So now what I have to do, I have to get on my knees to do this because these ones actually do have to be torqued in a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna... But once you can't uh, rotate the screw any further, don't bother trying to get it in there anymore because it's rubber. Um, it's not a piece of metal so it has quite a bit of give to it, so once you start screwing down, you're going to start pinching the rubber. That's all you want to do is pinch the rubber. You don't want to torque it so much that the rubber begins to bow out or whatever. And be careful with this specific one because this is where your switch is. Okay, It's connected directly to a, a very small piece of plastic under the switch. So just kind of put that in there, make sure it's in there, and it's not going to fall out. Okay. Now the next thing I usually do is I put my feet in, okay, because I don't have any other screws to put in there. So I make sure that I get them in. I'm going to put the screws that go on the side, which screw into that piece of plastic you saw underneath. And again, be careful with these because they're just screwing into plastic. You don't want them too tight because you may crack it and then that will cause some kind of weird rattling when you're DJing on a big sound system and possibly cause embarrassment or at least technical problems for yourself and everybody else involved. Okay, and the last set of screws I'm going to put in are the ones that go under the platter here. Now these ones are specifically delicate, at least I have found that they are. If you torque them too much, they'll break right off. Because they're not actually... Um, see, you, you can see where the metal is here. So this is just basically attaching this 
to the bottom part. This goes directly against the cabinet and holds this in place. So you're not really pinching the rubber too much when you put these on. So just make sure when you do it that they're on there but not so tight that they'll break right off. Okay, so now I have my turntable back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off this milk crate. The milk crate is good because again it protects the toner while you're working on your turntable, gives you a very stable surface to work on. And as you can see I can do this sitting down very easily. Now we're going to remove it straight up because um, I don't want to damage anything. Okay, I'm going to put it in my lap. I'm going to get rid of this, uh, this milk crate. Okay, I'm going to set my turntable down here. Okay, and I'm going to put it back together. All right. Make sure you get your little foamy piece in here. All right. Because it helps keep the dust out of your turntable. Okay. Now, I'll put my counterweight back on. Okay, it just screws on. If you notice, when you screw this back on, if, if it seems too hard to screw on, um, it's hard to see, but inside this, it's threaded, okay? And there's a little, uh, almost like a ball bearing on the end of a piece of copper on the underside of this, which goes into that track. You want to make sure you get it in that track, because this is how you carefully calibrate the weight of your needle. Okay. Alright. There we go. Now we're going to put the platter back on. And as I said before, okay, this is the actual motor. Um, it's an ingenious idea. Now what I like to do, this is the only other thing I'm going to re recommend you do. If I can find my screwdriver. There's three screws that hold this on. I like to check to make sure they're tight because if they're loose at all, it can affect uh, the speed of your turntable, believe it or not. Now these ones seem fairly tight. Okay. Um, if for any reason, I don't know why anybody would do this, but if you decide to remove this, let's say it got cracked and you bought a new one, this is very hard to get back dead center. Um, and if it's off center at all when you put it in here, it's going to affect the rotation of your turntable. There's little clips on here that they've designed for the magnet to sit on, but even that has a little bit of play to it, so you really have to be careful when you put this back on if, 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 you, if it gets damaged or you buy a new one or what have you. Um, so just always check the tightness of this before you put it back on. Now what we're going to do, there's a special way to put this back on, you can't just throw it back on there, okay? Make sure you put your fingers in these holes, that's what they're designed for, okay? And then make sure that you're right over top of the spindle, okay, and very slowly lower back onto your turntable, okay. Make sure it spins free and there's no noise, nothing binding, okay. Make sure that it's nice and level, that it's not wobbly. Well, yeah, the, ru the rubber, I mean, you can, if I tap on this, you get kind of a dull ring. If that rubber wasn't on there, um, and I'll, I'll just point out the rubber again. Okay. The rubber is quite thick around here. The reason it's quite thick around here is a lot of DJs when they're DJing they touch the dots on the platter to either move the platter forward or to slow it down. Technics was ingenious enough to put some extra rubber there so it's not as noticeable when you touch it. And then they put this big thick piece which is about probably a third of an inch, well no, maybe about a quarter of an inch thick all the way around. Um, Okay, so when you're putting this back on, make sure that you're right over top and go straight down. Because if you bump the magnet, yeah, that magnet, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, the magnet, if you drop a magnet, okay, it's, it's going to lose part of its power. So you want to be very careful when you're removing and putting this platter down. When the turntable's together, it's quite shockproof. Like, you could potentially drop this and it really won't affect the, uh, the motor, although you don't want to you don't want to drop your turntable, but you know you have flight cases. You put your turntables in them, and they get jostled around, and it doesn't really affect it. But if per se you had this platter off and you dropped it right on the floor, it would affect how much torque your turntable has because the magnet wouldn't be as strong as it was before. So when it's electrified, because it's an electromagnetic motor, it won't be as powerful as it was before. So now our turntable is all put back together, okay? 
Um, now we get to test it out. 